the electrochemical gradient. So we're going to start with a membrane okay. with a bunch of potassium ions. Shall we have that in the inside of the of this model cell? Okay. Sure. Okay. So let's see. Right now we've got a large sort of concentration disparity because we've got a lot of potassium here and no potassium here. So what happens? What what the potassium ions are? Are they going to stay there or do they start doing something? Um. Well, let's see. They're all m sort of moving around. They are. And at some point, I bet one of them's going to sort of happen to move through the membrane, right. through the channel. That's so, right. so they don't know anything about the concentration gradient. It's just that the probability of one of them hitting the hole and going through is much higher if their concentration is higher on one side mm -hmm. than on the other. Okay. And what happens when it moves through to the membrane? Um, it builds up. A charge, right? Yeah, now where does that charge come from? Well, let's see. So the potassium ions aren't just by themselves. Yeah, they're not bare. How, how, well, they're surrounded by something. What are they surrounded by? They're surrounded by water, probably. Yeah, how would the water configure itself to kind of um, absorb or uh, dissolve the potassium? Good. Well, we always drew water in high school. I like that. Like so the that. oxygen has a negative charge, and the hydrogen has a positive charge. And the negative part is actually attracted to, to the, the positive potassium. part. Yeah. Right. So it's surrounded, and these are called waters of hydration. Mm -hmm. Okay. Waters of hydration. Good. And when the potassium hits up against the membrane, now the membrane also has charges, and those usually have to have something to neutralize them. So if you pull a positive charge out, Effectively, you're going to leave behind on the membrane what kind of charge? Would it be negative? Yes. Now, across the membrane, what has to be true so you can maintain bulk electron neutrality? There would be a positive charge. That's right. So that would end up, there's a little bit of a negative charge on the inside and a little, a little positive charge on the outside. And what, now we have charges across the membrane. What does that do? That builds up a, an electrical gradient, That's right? right. So let's draw a little arrows here. So yes. Going have, in one direction, we have the... The chemical gradient. Which is also known as the concentration gradient, right? Mm -hmm. You want that T there, too. Yeah. Yeah, so you might also label it, yeah, slash concentration gradient. Good. And now you're starting to build up another kind of gradient. You said an electrical gradient. And what? how is it directed? Um. Well, let's see. This positive one probably wants to go toward the negative charge right. built up on the membrane, so it will be going the opposite direction, this way. and that's your electrical gradient. Okay. So how does this translate into equations that we can use? Right. Well, the question, I guess, is what happens next? Do the do the potassium ions, if they're very high on the inside and, and low on the outside, they're going to keep coming out, right? What happens to the charges across the membrane? They're going to keep building up. Right. So that's going to keep going up to a certain point. So let's put a more, few more charges after a few more things have gone through. Right? That's right. Now, over there to the right, let's draw another membrane. And let's sort of summarize all this by talking about the movements of the ions as a flux. Okay. And a flux is a movement of charge. It's a movement of charge. Okay. So due to the... Actually, it's a movement of material in which case, but in this case, it's charged material. Okay. Because you can have fluxes of things that don't have charges. Okay. So the concentration gradient is pushing things that way. And so you get a flux, we call that J, that's due to the concentration. And then the electrical then gradient? Is pushing things that way. That's right. And get you, a flux, you have a flux. Now, interesting, you drew the arrows at the same size. What is that? What are you implying? By that? Um, well, eventually these should balance out. Right? That's right. And what happens when they're in balance? That's an equilibrium. Exactly. So can we write that down as an equation in terms of the fluxes? So the concentration gradient would be equal and opposite. That's right. So we'll use a minus sign to indicate it's opposite. And so another way of putting that is we can move them both to one side and say what? But the concentration gradient plus... The concentration flux, flux plus, the, plus electrical the electrical flux. flux. 
should equal zero. That's right. Now we're not going to go through the math, but you could then solve for that and find what the equilibrium potential across the membrane is. And the equation you get once you do that is? We've got, this is the gas constant, mm -hmm. right? That's and a temperature. Absolute temperature. In Kelvins, right? Yeah. And then the charge. That's right. And then, and then Faraday's, Faraday's constant. Natural log natural of, log of we've concentration got of an ion out, out over ion in. Good. And now if we wanted to put all of these constants together, let's think. Potassium has a charge of? One. Right. Or plus one. Yeah. Plus one. So that would just become RT over F. If we want to rewrite this as some number in millivolts times the log to the base 10, what would we get? Ah, at Turns room in. temperature, it'd be 58 yeah. millivolts. So this is at 19 degrees Celsius. 19 degrees Celsius. Equals log 10. Um, now we're talking about the potassium, that's right. Out over potassium. In. And there we have it. We have shown where the Nernst potential comes from and how it's built up. Mm -hmm. And it is the as you showed very nicely, it's the balance between the chemical or concentration gradient and the electrical gradient leading to the fluxes, the net fluxes being equal to? Zero. Right. Now, does that mean there's no flux across the membrane? No, because there's still this push and pull from these two. Exactly. So you still would see the ions traveling back and forth, but overall, the number that would be there are, that are changing is zero. They equal each other out. And that's what an equilibrium is. Okay. Good. Cool. cool.